Okay, so we are finishing up um, the trapezoid notes. We started them yesterday with isosceles and non-isosceles trapezoids, and today we're going to talk about mid-segment of a trapezoid. So in order for a segment to be a mid-segment, it has to split each side, each non-parallel side, into equal parts. So if you see these congruent markings, that's because those are equal sections and these congruent markings make these equal sections. So it is a mid-segment, EF is considered a mid-segment if AB is parallel to CD is parallel to EF and these are all segments. So I have to have a segment bar across them. So all three of those, this guy, this guy, and this guy, they're all three parallel to each other. So that has to happen for it to be a mid-segment. And then also EF is the average of the bases. So it's average of AB and DC put together. And so if you think of when we average numbers, you learned in junior high, if you average numbers, you add them up and divide by how many things you added. Okay, well, we're just averaging two. So we're going to add segment AB with CD and divide by two. Okay, so it's the average of the two measurements. So if we practice, um, we're going to use that same diagram for the next four problems and they have given us a b as 14 okay and i'm just gonna draw a little sketch here so this is 14 all right dc is 26 and we are trying to find ef so i'll make it x so i know that the mid segment is equal to the average of my bases the bases are your parallel sides so 14 plus 26 i'm adding two things so i'm gonna divide by two and so i'll just simplify that and i will get 20 because 14 plus 26 is 40, and 40 divided by 2 is 20. Okay. If I do the same thing over here, AB is 7, DC is 31, and I'm trying to find EF. So X is going to be equal to the average of 7 and 31. 7 and 31 is 38, and 38 divided by 2 is 19. All right. I now have EF, which is this, as 22 and DC, which is the bottom, as 38. And I am missing this measurement here. Okay, So I know that the mid-segment, which in this case is 22, is the average of my bases. So you're doing exactly the same thing, but your X is in a different spot now because I actually know the mid-segment where I not was finding it before. And this you're actually going to have to solve. So in order to get rid of the 2 in the denominator, since we're dividing both sides by 2, I can just multiply both sides by 2 so that I have 44 is equal to x plus 38 divide, minus 38 from both sides. And 44 minus 38 is going to be 6. So AB is 6. If I have this trapezoid again, same one. AB is 41. EF, which is the middle, is 47. And I'm missing DC. And I'm, again, I'm getting all this from this diagram up here, the, where those things go. And I know that the mid-segment, which is 47 in this case, is the average of my bases, 41 plus X divided by 2. If I want to figure out what X is, which is the missing side, DC, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. 2 times 47 is 94. So 94 equals 41 plus X. I'll minus 41 from both sides. And so that I get X is equal to 53. So that means that CD is equal to 53. All right, for trapezoid QRS, Y and Z are the midpoints. So that means this is equal to this and this is equal to this. So without them telling us this is a mid-segment, by telling us that Y and Z are midpoints, it is a mid-segment. So they didn't use the words mid-segment, they just described it as a mid-segment. We are supposed to find the length of Y, Z, but in order to do that, we're going to have to find X. So I know, using the same thing we've done, the mid-segment in this case, which is 5X minus 19, is equal to the average of your bases. So I'm adding my two bases. The top one was 38, the bottom one is X plus 14, so I'm adding them together. And when you're averaging, you're dividing by 2. So I need to get rid of that 2 in the denominator. So like we did on number 3 and 4, I am going to multiply both sides by 2. Now you have to be careful here. When I multiply this by 2, I'm going to have to distribute it. 
Okay, so I'm going to have 10x minus 38 is equal to 38x plus, oh, sorry, not 38x plus 14, but 38 plus x plus 14. Okay, and so then what I'm going to have to do is I am going to have to um, move my numbers over to one side and my x is over. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides, so I get 9x. And I'm going to add 38 to the right, and I'm going to combine that 38 and the other 38 and the 14 all together. So I'm going to simplify all those numbers together, so that I get 90. Divide both sides by 9, and I get x is 10. It didn't ask for x, though. It asked us to find yz. yz is this equation here, 5 times 10 minus 19. So we have 50 minus 19. So we have yz is equal to 31. Similar kind of thing here. All right. I know that L is the midpoint of the leg it's on and M is the midpoint here. So if you look at that, that means that this is a mid-segment. Okay. So I know that the mid-segment is equal to the average of my basis. I'm going to add 2x plus 11 plus 6x minus 1. And if I'm averaging, I have to also divide by 2. I'm going to now multiply both sides by 2 so that I have 50 is equal to, I'm going to go ahead and combine these, 8x plus 10. All right, I'm going to minus 10 from both sides, so I get 40 is equal to 8x. And I'm going to divide both sides by 8 so that x is equal to 5. But I need to find kj. And kj is this segment here, which is 6x minus 1. So I'm going to do 6 times 5 minus 1, which is 30 minus 1. So kj is equal to 29. Last one. We know that u is the midpoint of this leg, and v is the midpoint of this leg. That's this description here, meaning that uv is a mid-segment. So since it's a mid-segment, I will say the mid-segment is equal to the average of my bases. So I'm adding two segments. So I'm going to divide by 2. I will, to get rid of the divide by 2, multiply both sides by 2. And I will carefully have to distribute this. So I have 16x minus 6 is equal to, let's go ahead and combine our like terms. I will have 7x plus 12. I need to be able to get x by itself, so I'm going to minus 7x from both sides and add 6 to both sides so that I have 9x is equal to 18. Divide both sides by 9, and I'll get x is equal to 2. It asks me to find uv. uv is this here, so I'll do 8 times 2 minus 3, and 8 times 2 is 16, and 16 minus 3 is 13, so uv is equal to 13. It's the same process over and over and again, just your x is sometimes in a different location.